Hey, it's Drew Blight here. We're back. This time we're going to be taking a look at the Chaos Dragon for Arcadia Quest. It has a new final six level boss to end your campaigns on a more epic note. And, uh, box it backwards. And, uh, this one has some really interesting abilities. It opens random portals around the map and things. And anyway, we're going to write in and take a look. So first off, we have our campaign book here. Pretty much the same as all the other dragons. There is a really neat fluff story in the beginning of each of them that explains the background and history of where they came from and why they're here. And the first half of the book or so explains the dragon's special abilities and how things work. Fighting dragons in general, which is the same for all of them, and then they each have a little unique section specific to that dragon. In the Chaos Dragons case here, it talks about the Chaos Tokens and the uh, portals that he opens. And in the back we have our scenarios. This one actually has a slightly different layout than some of the others, which is cool. But still overall is the same scenario. And they have them listed in here for both Inferno and the regular game. Next up we have our board piece, which again is one side for regular Arcadia Quest, one side for Inferno. And then we have our tray, which I applaud them for doing more to actually build a tray to hold things, but again it doesn't have any compartments to hold any of the tokens, which they could have made under the where the cards go. There's plenty of room to extend that down and put a little pocket for tokens. I'm not sure why they didn't. And we have our Chaos Tokens. Again, they didn't give you the bags. These are my own, but... Chaos Tokens do very interesting and scary things. Oddly enough, there doesn't seem to be as many of them as you get of the other tokens for the other dragons, though. And then we have Chaos Portals. These do interesting things as well. We'll get to them in a minute. We have a new mission card for the scenario. As with the other ones, it's just the ground the dragon, which is the first stage of the two parts of the dragon fight. And again, as with all the others, we have a young and an elder version of the dragon. The young ones use the first time you fight a dragon. If you're fighting multiples of the dragons or you just want a harder time, you go with the elder version. And they have the initial contact where you first find them and then the advanced uh, for the second and final battle. As with all the dragons, we have our dragon turn deck. These are going to basically be the AI for the Chaos Dragon. And they're going to decide what he does each turn, whether he summons minions, moves about the board, opens portals, or starts doing other nasty things. And uh, these are what make them a little more unique and different than standard monsters in Arcadia Quest, where the standard monsters only react to things that you do in the form of payback actions or guard re reactions, things like that. These give it a little more of a feel of actually being alive, moving around, doing things unexpected, jumping around the board, and cool things like that. Next we have our Dragonstone cards. As with the others, these work just like the Brimstone cards in Inferno and the Tombstone cards in Beyond the Grave. They're going to be spread throughout the map on tiles based on the setup. You can spend a movement point on them to flip them over and see what happens. Some things good, some things bad. You never know what you're going to get. Since we're a new level 6 add-on to your campaign, you get a full deck of level 6 upgrades to draft from. Some of these are unique to each of the dragons. Some of them are um, the same. There's a whole set of dragon bits in here that get bonuses for having additional pieces of them. You can use these as a standalone. There's plenty there to draft from. Or what I'm going to end up doing is taking all the ones that are unique and not mirrored in the different decks and combining them into one deck of tier 6 uh, upgrades for people to draft from. And of course, besides saving the city... You're going to be after some cool new rewards, because who would fight a dragon if there wasn't a good reward involved? And I'll try to hide a little bit of what they are, just to keep some surprise in there. But there's your two reward items from the Chaos Dragon. These are great if you're going to go on to fight other dragons and keep the campaign rolling. 
You can get even more powerful for future battles. And then all of the dragons have a dragon power card, which if you achieve certain objectives during one of the scenarios, you're going to get access to this. It goes on one of the heroes in your guild. This actually slides down behind their character card and gives you new stats as well as a new ability that can be triggered and exhausted just like any other upgrade card. Those are, again, really cool if you're playing multiple scenarios and you're going to be moving on to the other ones. And the model himself, of course, is another one where you have to add and remove the wings for storage, which I'm going to try to come up with storage for. They do have a little notch here so you know which one goes where. Not that they're that difficult to figure out. Just worried that sliding them on and off will damage them over time. And he is a big, pretty chubby guy here, but big, mean looking dragon. I love the fact that they're all so unique and different looking as well. And the uh, really cool mechanic that comes with the Chaos Dragon, each one of them has their own little special ability. And his is to distribute these chaos tokens out, and they go on the different heroes in your guild. And what really makes them entertaining is that if any point during the game a guild gets four of these tokens, doesn't matter what hero they're on, but if among the members of your guild you have four of those tokens and play at once, all of the guild members on your guild roster are actually going to swap one to the right. So... If you have Johan, he's built up with lots of swords. You have Spike, and he's got all sorts of armor. You have Maya with a bunch of magic spells. They're all going to switch over. So suddenly, Johan has all the armor, Spike has all the magic, and Maya now has all the swords. So it can completely throw things into disarray or cause chaos, which is his point. The other really cool thing that he does is put these chaos um, teleporters on the map, these portals, and... If you're ever on a square where one of these is, you get randomly teleported to different points on the map, which you have to roll to see where you appear. You also get a chaos token for being teleported. And if there's two models on the square that you're being teleported to, which would normally block you from moving there, you end up picking one of the two that's there and teleporting them back to where you came from. So you swap places, and it gives that person a chaos token as well. So you can cause all sorts of, of mayhem with those. And of course the cards in the dragon turn trigger where to put those and add them on too. So that's a really cool aspect. I believe one of his attacks does it as well. I'm not positive on that. but So you can see where things get out of hand really quickly. Kind of an interesting concept. Um, that's pretty much everything that comes with the Chaos Dragon expansion. As I said with the other ones, I'm disappointed that the scenarios are extremely similar. The layouts are a little bit different, but the whole idea of shooting them down from flying and then fighting them in the city still remains. However, between the dragon turn deck and their various abilities that each dragon has, there is enough difference to make them feel like a different fight, which is what really matters. The co-op aspect of it, you can kind of take or leave. The Chaos Dragon out of all of them has more of a take that feel to it because of when you're going through the portals and swapping with people, you can screw somebody else over. Somebody's got three Chaos Tokens and you end up going to their location. You can pick that person, switch places with them, give them that fourth Chaos Token, screw up all the equipment on their guild and cause just havoc with everyone. So that's kind of a neat little thing on there and... Uh, Definitely a much more satisfying boss fight than the ones in the standard scenario. So that's always cool. I love the fact that they thought ahead to the fact that you can keep going after you fight them. Fight the other dragons. Depending on the order you play through, you're going to have different reward cards, different abilities from the upgrade deck, different powers. And uh, you can change up the order that you play them and give you access to different ones of those. So it adds a lot of replay value there as well. Definitely a cool expansion add-on. I don't know if you need all four of the dragons, but it's definitely kind of neat to have them to pick and choose what you're going to do. And uh, adds a lot to the campaign, I think. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for uh, the Chaos Dragon expansion. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.